Iowa, huh? You live in the middle of a cornfield? Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm an artist and teacher trying to bring you the best in art history videos. As always, I appreciate likes, shares, and new subscribers, and these videos are intended for those 13 years of age and older. Today I want to talk a little bit about an artist that's not really one of my favorites at all. His name is Robert Ryman. But in order to get into his story, I'm going to use a little bit different storytelling method, and that is by talking about a guy that had something to do with the best thing since sliced bread. Hey, Wilbur, get a load of this story. Otto Rowitter was born in Iowa in 1880. Soon he would migrate down to Missouri where he became a pretty successful jeweler. But Otto would give up those jewels to create the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yep, he sold those stores to Innovate Automated Bread Slicer. Through trial and error and as time went by, by 1928, he had developed a bread slicer that would wrap and cut loaves of bread. Okay, well, all settled then. Slicing the bread creates more space for the bread to be exposed to oxygen. Obviously, this would allow the bread to become stale more quickly. This is where we would see companies like Wonder Bread emerge into the market. For lots of kids to grow up good and strong, you ask mom to get Wonder Bread. Now, typically that would be the end of the story, but we're just at the beginning. Like most bread, Wonder Bread is also made out of wheat. Wheat basically contains three parts. Bran, germ, and carb. They would discover if the bran and germ were removed, the bread would last longer. Oh, you're much too smart for a poor old woman that ain't had no schooling or nothing. <laughs> so folks buying the bread felt like it was a better buy, even though it had very minimal, if zero, nutritional value. It contained no fiber or protein that is needed to digest the carb or the other sugars added to it. So in some ways, sliced bread ruined bread. So when we look at something like sliced bread, obviously we see a problem that is solved. But it is not often that we look at the problems caused. You have everything going for you. You're on a gravy train with biscuit wheels. Okay, so how does bread relate to Robert Ryman? It's showtime. All right, now here's what I can tell you about Robert Ryman. Ryman studied music for one year at the George Peabody College for teachers in Nashville, Tennessee. After a year, he dropped out and went into the military. And in the army, he was assigned to play in the band during the Korean War. In 1952, he would move to New York to study jazz music and taking odd jobs. In Nashville, when I was growing up, you didn't hear anything but country on the radio and jukeboxes at that time and I was never really interested in that. I was more interested in uh, jazz. I would uh, hunt around late at night on the radio trying to find a New York station or something where I could hear something else. It was the music really that was more interesting for me than, than painting which I'd never seen. So when I came to New York it was the music that was the most important thing. Eventually, he was employed as a guard at the Museum of Modern Art. And after he began employment, he started to paint. After two years of tinkering, he basically went pro. Although I can't officially back that up with paperwork. He painted a solid color onto a canvas. Then he began to paint white onto the white canvas. Now this is where he would gain his fame. So what makes each one of these works unique? He's painting white onto a white canvas. What makes each one of these paintings unique? Robert Ryman, explain it to us. Well, it, uh, uh, similarities, but you no. Know, it's just, it's, uh, it's simply the way they painted it. Uh, well, that's obvious. Obviously, you're painting it. They're going to be painted the same. Please, some more information. Come on now. The, uh, you know, Monet's, uh, uh, did a lot of, well, Monet did a lot of marbles, and he also did some haystacks, uh, a number of haystacks, and with 
very similar, <laughs> but uh, very unique. Um, and I think it's it's the same. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold up now. If you're gonna say that painting white on white over and over again is the same as Claude Monet painting water lilies or haystacks over and over again to show aerial perspective and the difference of light and texture as time changes, as the sun changes, that seems like an answer of a con man. It sounds like a BS answer. One way or another, this guy would con his way into an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art three years later. Basically, he would chalk it up to his old pals, Dan Flavin, Eva Hesse, Saul LeWitt, and Michael Venezia. These were working artists that had the inside knowledge into the Museum of Modern Art on what they would accept, what they would like, what would be big, and how to proceed with the work. All the great artists I knew took classes. Did you ever formally study painting? No, not as, uh, I didn't go to a, an art school as such. Okay, what do I know? I color for a living. But even I can tell you that an artist needs to have some level of artistic training to have some level of, of artistic knowledge or base to do what they do. You wouldn't believe how many people think I'm dumb. As I've stated, I personally and obviously have a dislike for Robert Ryman and his work. Now don't confuse it, I don't have a problem with minimalism. The first white painting was created by Kazimir Malievich with his white on white and the style began to take off as a reaction against abstract expressionism. Many of the minimalists would emerge during the late 1950s. Some of the artists would include Agnes Martin, Joe Baer, and Joseph Albers. But Robert Ryman is a con. He makes me drink. The new world is inevitable. So when we look at an invention like the machine that would slice bread, it definitely solves a problem. But in doing so, it creates a problem. And there are many art scholars that say, well, Robert Ryman can get away with it because he was the first one to do it. And by innovating something new and different, he solves a problem. But in turn, he creates an even bigger one. You're such a prick. He creates a problem where literally nothing becomes something. And when there's a message to young artists that are just starting out that zero training can equal great success, and when we send the message that zero skill reaps great reward, that's very much a problem in the art world. And it's a very difficult problem to overcome as an educator. Because trying to explain that knowing the rules before you break the rules is really, really hard when you have somebody like Robert Ryman that has no education, no training, no background, but cashed in because he knew people. While people with legitimate skills got nothing. Well then, I guess you're really up shit creek. But it's also a word to the wise. Just because it's in an art gallery doesn't make it good art. Most art will increase in value, but not Robert Ryman. On one occasion, he sold a painting for $24 million. A decade later, it depreciated to $11 million. In my opinion, it's still too much for what he does. It's like I've said for years. I can crap in a wrapper, but that don't make it a Snickers. You're sick, you know that? You're really sick. And honestly, it boggles my mind that anyone can seriously appreciate his work. When he began, he started doing still lives and other such things, but he just didn't know how to do it. And so minimalism was an easy way out for him. So this is the story of a guy with no skill, no desire to educate himself, and never even saw a painting until he decided to become an artist. All right, so what does Robert Ryman have to say about that? I just like all the tourists and, and I, uh... And I went to museums and uh, I saw paintings for the first time. <laughs> All right, now that was a great story. I heard in Iowa that they put bush light in the baby's bottles like right from birth.